What's going on, fellow zombies? Yeah, without doing the usual quips on this one. Just say it's about 6.01 on a Sunday evening. It's the 9th of July, 2023. And the Diary of the Grieving named John Weaver, which would be me. And I'm having issues as it is. You know, sometimes I'll see stuff on the news and it doesn't hit me as hard. But there are certain elements out there that actually do hit hard. I mean, I've heard for so long that people have died from a lot of things left and right. Sometimes it'll kick me. And other times it won't. When I start hearing pets in the last several years, it's starting to affect me more and more. Especially when I keep looking at my own dog, little girl. My mama's is pushing 19 to 20. And she's showing her age. She injured herself earlier this year. Or last year. Oh, earlier this year. Jumping off the couch and not able to stand up properly. I didn't have the money in inch I didn't have the money or the credit card approved during that time. Otherwise I'd have x rays and tests and they cost. But she's been running around okay, she's been walking around, but lately these days I guess the depression or something else is getting to her. Or maybe the old age is really catching up on her. She used to be feisty enough where she wanted to run around, especially after she do a lengthy pee or a number two. I'm getting worried. And it's it's already putting me on that damn emotional roller coaster again. I see people posting online about how much they miss their loved ones. Believe me, we all, if we've lost them, we understand that feeling. I mean, we could say all the platitudes, but it's all it is sometimes. But telling them by not saying a word, and by being in their presence, at least there, at least we're telling them, yeah, we know, we know, we're there. I had to do that for another gentleman who was having issues with his own. He had his for so long and he practically bonded with him, this one. So I don't know how the hell I'm going to be able to deal with it when Mama goes. I don't I don't know if I'm going to be able to but the thing is I know the place will be a lot emptier for right now I have to be grateful that I still have my mom who's here but what scares the hell out of me is, in, is that day of day coming and I'm no longer going to have her in my life. I mean, I wasn't worried about it 10 years ago. She was already freaking out because Mama wasn't alive during those days. And she had a bond closer and closer to David and me. And when he passed away, we really had the bond. When they had a 4th of July fireworks going on, she was really afraid of the dark and she didn't like the noise. And she was getting blind. She still got the cataracts. Her sense of smell still there. And I have to work with her on this. We walk in an area where scent is important to her. She leaves it all over the place as her markers. So she knows where she's going to be. And sometimes when she's getting a little frisky, 
Sometimes she will get disorientated and I have to keep hauling her back in. To me, she's the last remnants of a family that I actually gave a shit about and cry over and, and I don't know what the hell I'm going to do when I lose when I when I lose her. I don't know how the hell I'm going to be able to deal with myself during that time. She means a great she means the world to me. There was a gentleman I did a video before this one. Another YouTuber out there. Who also lost, I can't say a pet, I'd say a family member. To me, even if you had the pet for a long while and had been bonded to your family, it's a family member. It's, it's not a pet. Maybe I thought that way a long time ago, but these days it's a family member. And it's been that way for a while. I worry about my dog constantly now. Losing her is losing a part of me more and more. It's bad enough. I have to deal and walk on. When Ma had lost some of her babies in her lifetime, it took her about a couple of weeks before we had to go to a pound Screw the pet shop. Go to a pound. It's better that way. Unfortunately, I need transportation up and back for that one. And I would have to see if the pet's going to be a good fit. Because I hate to put them back in the cage. You know when you see them and you look them in the eyes. And sometimes you're surprised. Either yay or nay. People want specialty dogs. Oh, there's a lot of them out there I'd love to adopt. I just can't afford them. Or have enough room for these guys. Or deal with management. I would have to go through process of saying that I need paperwork. Saying that this animal is my emotional support animal. And believe me, at times, I think I find the pet a little more comforting than I do another human being. Because at least I know they're, they're wanting my reassurances and I want their company. You got, I can put all the damn stuffed animals around here. It doesn't mean a thing. Except I can put stuffed animals over here for decorations and... Some are important and others are not. A few of them are definitely from times my brother and I had gotten for Ma, or we would gotten them for David, and the rest of them are just mine that I got. But it's all needed. It's all needed. But they don't replace a family member on four legs. I am allergic to cats, so I can't do cats, but I can do dogs. Thing is, I've been around dogs most of my life anyway, so. Big dogs down to small dogs now. I need something to cuddle. I need someone the cuddle. I was hoping maybe that the video or videos that I sent over would be enough to tell this one gentleman that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it hurts in here.
already I feel like I'm on that damn roller coaster going up on the damn ramp. First up to start everything else. So I probably will need to get the damn trigger going and the waterworks and everything else going. There's nothing wrong loving an animal. Especially if you have the love inside of you to do so. If you have the empathy and the sympathy. If you're actually able to do so. It's getting harder and harder for me to see some of those kind of posts online. Because half the time either I'm trying to delete them and then, that, and then after that I'm putting them back on there again and, and passing them to other people because of how hard it is for me even to go through the process and I've been through it too many damn times. It's more than once and there was a lot of them. And each time it still hurts but you know I had to keep moving on. I had to keep moving on. I had to keep and that's the thing these days is I'm not moving on. At times there had been where I actually had moleskin on my heart, as I'd called it. And I wouldn't have any holes any around in it. And I'd be able to get through the grieving in the mourning process and just keep going through. Try to Try to be tough, try to be brave, try to be a good boy, a big boy. Ugh. It's not easy dealing with grieving and mourning. It's not easy enough to talk to people in person about this. It was one thing you're talking to a therapist at this point over here, and I'm still putting up the veneer and the facade You know, they try to talk about it in a, in a calm, logical manner, and it, but now what am I going to be breaking down left and right? For lifelong, uh, most of my life going to the doctor's office, I've been terrified. Been used as a lab rat, poked, pot, prodded, pilled up. There was a lot of anger and a lot of resentment. Blood pressure always skyrocketing. It didn't even, it didn't even matter if I was in my, you know, in my late forties and going through the fifties that I would go to the therapist these days, and I'd still have it. I'd still feel the rise of blood pressure. I still feel the tension. I still feel the terror and the anxiety of it. Just even with a ter with a therapist on a phone. Or let alone having a therapist in person. It's never been easy talking to another person like this. It's only gotten for so many years that I've gotten used to a camera. Or let alone a, a, a phone app that records. Audio recordings. And it's only been within 10 years that I've been actually getting used to that. I mean, I tried to get used to it a little earlier on with micro cassette recorders. Talking about things and recording music and stuff. But when it came down from my own damn point of view, shit. But when it comes down for really pouring out my damn heart and soul, that's another scenario altogether. And I suppose that actually when I did get my hands on a micro cassette, I was just going off on the damn thing. And even if I happen to switch to a digital, I'm still going off on the damn thing. And just to talk about things. It gets harder and harder for me to use those damn small things. That's why I put it on a phone that works. At least I can, it's simple enough for me to work with.
At times I wake up in the morning and I'm crying my eyeballs out. Because I'll have a, a dream or memory that hits and a trigger that knocks my ass out and then there goes my day. Or I'm trying to go to sleep and I'll cry myself to sleep. Maybe some people consider it weakness. Maybe. All I know is I hurt. And I have to cry. And I got no shame in crying. Except I do it in here, but I don't do it out there because out there I always have to keep up with the veneer and facade. I always show them the pretty face. Lie my ass off to them. Now sometimes I'll tell them, like some days are good, and other days, like today. I'll get the traditional and the usual. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Give me a break. <sighs> Feeling sorry for the situation at hand. Yeah, well. How I'm struggling right now is dealing with the emotions that usually screw me over one way or another. Especially when I'm on a roller coaster and I'm going through the emotions. The ups and downs, curves, bends, the plunges. Afterwards, I'm feeling so damn wasted. Sometimes you just got to find a waste basket. Probably taking off all those damn Kleenexes I've got out of my pocket. Get them used up. Throw them in the basket. But if I was heading to the toilet, well, that's a different story altogether. And I'm not about to say about number three there. But I haven't gotten to that point yet. But I've had some heavy-duty ones. Well, it's not easy enough to talk about these things anyway, but I had to get this off my chest. So, if there's anything political coming out there, I probably will bend people's ears on that one. But for the meanwhile, I just wanted to say something to the guy who lost his dog. Actually, I think it was a cat. If it was a cat, it was a cat named Hattie. I should just say it was a family member named Hattie. I know people would think about a human being. Sometimes we just don't know whether or not the family member is animal or not. But it still matters. It still matters. It matters in here. I've lost too many family members, both with multiple legs and two legs. And hadn't really mourned a great deal. Not as much as I've been doing over the past several years. It's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. If you've been following my videos, you also know I'm a college student going to a community college. Just to get a basic AA out of something. But I had to take time off from it just to deal with, with this. Emotions have a hell of a way of messing around concentration, especially when you need to get it done and get subjects passed. You need to be focused on it. But when you have grieving and mourning happening at the same time, it just don't work.
there have been things I've been thinking about that having to deal with three trigger words, family, home, and hearth. And it's hard enough dealing with that and realizing it, that all your friends and loved ones ain't around anymore. Some are moving out because of reasons or things happening in their lives. And lose contact, and that's it. Other people that I actually care about, that I actually wanted to care about, they're no longer, no longer there. Are hiding and just block me left and right. I don't know what the hell I said or pissed them off, but I have to deal with it on my own as usual. And I have to say it simply and honestly at this point over here, and it's I still have to work on the honesty part. I hate losing friends and I hate losing family members. And when I really get pissed off enough about it, I do stupids. Well, sometimes I'm too damn chicken and, and ashamed of really telling them exactly how I feel about the situation. And there's no way of making amends on those damn things. I'm the guy. To, I'm the kind of guy that does the nuclear war. I'm going to be angry enough. I'm going to be really angry enough. And I paid a price. And so did the other guys. And I lose people that I thought could be a pillar and support strength. And why was I dead wrong? Especially if I happen to have a... If I have participation in ruining relationships. They say air is human if the bell thinks up greatly it requires a computer. No. It requires my mouth and my wording. And I don't know how to make them all up or how to start over again. I know what it's like to be alone when you don't have family support. And grieving like crazy. I know what it's like to have stranger support. When you're grieving in the morning. But no support. That gets harder and harder to deal with, doesn't it? The emptiness that you feel inside the pain. And the anger building up. And you don't know how to be angry at the other people that left you. Or your own self for the whole damn shit. And that's what it's like for me dealing with my own right now as it is. People say you're feeling sorry for yourself. Be a man, get on it with it, do this and do that. Yeah, be, act be reckless about the whole damn shit. If I can make amends, I'd like to make amends. If I'm prevented from doing so, then I gotta deal with it and move on. And pray. Meanwhile, meanwhile, survive. I'm trying to understand more and more about how people feel about loss. They handle it differently. Either they'll avoid it like the plague or wish the thing on someone else or maybe maybe just mainly just deal with it on a day by day survival basis like I'm dealing with it. Or maybe they're going to be smiling about it and, and ignoring everything else and just go on through life. I tried to do that. Right after Ma, it didn't work. And right after David, and what was in between? No. No, I deal with the emotional roller coaster. I'll deal with the roller coaster. I'll deal with the grieving. I'll deal with the mourning. I'll deal with the crying if I have to. 
That's how it's got to be.